Okay, today we're going to be covering how to do a Works Cited page on Google Docs in MLA format. Um, we're going to be using the 8th edition of MLA. That would be um, the one that was out in 2016. Uh, this is just a super quick refresher. Um, real quick, I have the Google Doc already set up. Um, I have the other video showing you how to do that. It's the same thing as before with Times New Roman, 12-point font. I have my spacing on double. I have a header here with a page number. Um, the only difference is it says work cited here. Um, yeah, and so what we're going to do is looking at that um, eighth edition, which is the most current one. Um, it's just about the same, except they brought URLs back from when they used to not include them before. Um, you can go to the MLA website, or what works better is um, Al Purdue, uh, Al Purdue, the, the writing lab here. Uh, it's a great resource. It's got um, your MLA stuff. It also has APA in Chicago. Um, and as you can see right here on the left, it breaks down to all these different types of how you do endnotes, work cited pages, how you set a paper up. Um, they have everything from Twitter comments to YouTube videos. Uh, it's pretty easy to read. They even have this automatic sourcer up here. Um, the only thing I would say about those is there's a lot of times, actually most, 95% of the time, um, they're not going to be 100% um, accurate in reading the website. Uh, so just be really careful using the automatic ones. You should always just double check it after it goes through. Um, but, you know, it's pretty simple enough on its own. Uh, that, you know, that you should be able to do it. Um, we'll just go over it quickly. And another note, um, if you're not in my class and you're using this, um, some teachers get nitpicky about certain stuff that's, you know, not really by the book rules. Um, the best advice in any class is just follow what the teacher wants. Uh, of course, the way I'm doing this here is set up mainly for my class and it's as close as, you know, at least as, as much as I think as it is to uh, the actual MLA rules. So uh, what I have here is we are going to have two websites and one book, okay? And I try to get them as, as different as I can in three. Um, but, you know, you'll see how it goes. Basically, uh, what I'm going to do first is just write out the basic format for book and website. And we're just going to use that to fill it all in. It will go pretty quick, as you can see. Now, for books, all right, so I'll write that up here. For books, all you have to do is the author's last name followed by the first name, book title in italics, every element I hope you see is going to have a period after it so the name period title period then what you're going to have is the publisher the company followed by a comma the date published period and that is it um, if you are taking a certain section from the book only then you'll have the page numbers after just a p dot you know if i'm taking pages 250 to 290 this is the way it'll look like you do not have to rewrite 200 you only have to write out the tens after you already signify what hundred you're in. But that's basically all you have to do there. So books are extremely simple. Um, and then for websites, it's also pretty easy. Again, you're going to begin with the, author, the author's uh, last name and then the first name. You're going to have in parentheses the article title, okay, uh, followed by period parentheses. We are in America here, so it would be period inside and quotations on the out. Um, they do that differently in other places. Then we have the website in italics, followed by a comma, date published or updated, okay? Um, whatever's the most recent date on that website, you can throw in there. Then, of course, we need the URL by a period. And then finally, your date access. And they do require that you write the word access. And that's just today's date, okay? Uh, quick note. A lot of websites don't have names for authors, so you just skip it. No longer do you write NA, okay? Date published, if they don't have the date, you do not write ND, you just skip it all together. Um, I've got some without a date, you'll see. Um, yeah, and that's basically it. Now, if you're doing a magazine, it's kind of a mix. You're gonna have the author's last first name, the article, you know, like, I don't know, when Titanic hit the iceberg, and then you're going to have in italics, the magazine title, you know, National Geographic, and then the date it was published, the pages it's on, so forth, and 
so forth. So yeah, if you go back to that Al Purdue website, it'll, it'll go into how to do periodicals and stuff like that. So I'm going to leave these up here and I'm going to get rid of them later to show you what it finally looks like, but we're just going to use this to um, just type it out. So let's go off our first website. I thought it would be cool if we had a pretend paper on Vlad the Impaler because, you know, who doesn't like a good impaling, right? So we're going to check our first source, which is Britannica. This is a single author, Richard Pollardy, okay? So all we have to do is last name followed by the first name, period. First element done. Second element, article title, Vlad the Impaler. Make sure it is in quotes, and we're finished there. Next, website title, Britannica. Britannica, comma. Do we have a date for this one? Um, da -ba -da -ba -da. Do we have a date? And as you can see, we cannot find a date. It should have been right there at the top. It is not going to be down here at the bottom. So we just skip it. Just totally skip it. So there's no date published. We do have to go back and change this to a period now because our element is done. Uh, we go to URL. Just copy and paste it. I hit the cut button. Seems more in line with Vlad the Impaler. Throws it in there. Hit a period because we are done. Now we get to write accessed and today's date. Oh, let's be accurate here. Okay. And, and with a period, uh, you could write NOV or the full November. It's just the important part is day, month, year. That's how it goes. Um, so you got two things to do after this. Click on the link. Click on the broken chain here. Get rid of it. Then move your cursor to the front. And you want to indent any line that is not the first. So if it's two lines, you indent the second. If we got three lines, you got to indent the second and the third. The way you do that is we have to tab it. But if you hit tab it's going to move your top line. So go back, hit enter first, then tab, enter, then tab. Then you have a, uh, exactly what it's supposed to look like. Let's move on to our next website. We already finished one next website. Here we got the Romanian tourism board here. Okay. And, uh, let's look this up. Our first thing is we got to look for an author, first name, last name. There is no author. Sometimes they're at the very bottom of the article. I promise you there isn't one here. So no author, you just skip it. Let's go to the next element, article title. All right, Dracula legend. That's easy enough. Cool, period, quote. Now we got to do the website title, Romania, natural and cultural. Don't forget to italicize. Natural and cultural. Now we want to look for the date published of this article. There is no date published here. So just as before, we're going to add a period here and skip. Now, if there was a date, let's pretend this was written, I don't know, on the 3rd of October of 1886. You'd write 3 October 1886 and then a period, day, month, year, okay? But there isn't. So we're going to go back, period. Uh, we'd skip the date, go back, cut. Throw in the URL, hit that period. It is also accessed today. Okay. And we are going to remove the link. Enter tab. Look at this. I got two websites done already. Now, the last one I told you is going to be a book. All right. So we are going to check on this book. We need to get the author's last name and first name. It is James Watterson. Okay. So... Same game, Watterson, James, period. Then we have the title, Dracula's Wars, Vlad the Impaler and His Rivals. Just throw that in here. Okay. And we hit a period. We are done with that. Now notice that difference here with a website. You are putting a comma after it for the date published. Uh, for a book, you end it, you have the title as its own element. So then we get to the publisher and date. Um, that's that final element there. The publisher is the History Press. Okay. The History Press, comma, throw in the date published, 2017, and we are done with the book. All right. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff here. That shouldn't be here in the first place. 
And the only other thing we have to do is this, have to be, this has to be in alphabetical order. So what I'm going to do is this one starts with a D. There's a P. There's a W. Obviously, we know our alphabets. That's how we can type. We're going to cut this, move it up here, make it look pretty by getting rid of extra spaces, and we're done. We have ourselves here a Works Cited page with three different sources in the most current MLA format. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, like I said, check the description if you'd like a link to Al Purdue. Um, it's a great source. And, you know, this really didn't take all that long. It, and it's way more accurate doing it yourself than trusting any automated system. Um, all right. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.